What's up guys, welcome back to the channel another video. Today we're doing another open cup and I'm gonna be using this star shaped cookie cutter. Last time I used kind of a flower shape and it created some pretty interesting patterns in the painting. This is the dry version of that one. I know a lot of you are asking about it. It dried great, no cracking, no crazing. So we're gonna see what we can do with this star cookie cutter down here. Now these are the colors I'll be using. I have an ultramarine blue, magenta, dioxazine purple, cerulean blue, titanium white, and then for the base, another titanium white. Each one of these cups has like a secret ingredient, and I'll tell you as we're going along painting what that secret is. And I would recommend if you can, try to use it. As it creates some really cool effects that I've never been seen before, really. All right, so. First, we're going to put this base down. Don't need a whole lot. All right, so how's everybody doing this glorious day? For those of you that might notice, my nose is broken. <laughs> That's why I got a bruise on the bridge of my nose. But uh, I got into a truck accident on Sunday. Um, Nothing serious, no major injuries. Uh, the guy's truck was totaled that rear-ended me, but everybody at the scene was fine. So, you know, that's something I'm grateful for. But other than that, I hope everybody's doing wonderful. I'm doing great. Back at doing things that I love to do. I'm sure y'all can understand that. All right, so I want to try to create like an interesting little gradient between that dioxazine purple and the magenta. <clears throat> and then I kind of want to brighten it up with a little bit of white. Not a lot, because if I use a lot, it's going to take over, and I don't want that. And then kind of how we layered the dark to light, then white, we're going to do a light blue, which is the cerulean blue. And over that, put the ultramarine blue. So we create kind of a dark to light, back to dark. Wow, all right. Now I'm gonna put a little bit more white down. You see the really odd looking cells that are already starting to form. That's from that different ingredient that I was using. They're very strange shaped cells. They're not perfectly round, they're kind of very bio or kind of organic. It's wicked. But yeah, you see all these wicked, just crazy looking cells? So the star is creating kind of a shape. But you can see every time I raise it, the, um, the cells just push out from underneath that cup. Now I don't know if that one thing that I'm using will have some weird reactions with the canvas, so I wanna try to stop it from rolling under if I can. <clears throat> so, okay, I'm not gonna keep you all in suspense. I went out and got some Australian Floetrol. So in each one of these cups is about an ounce and a half of paint because these are three ounce cups. So there was an ounce and a half of paint, one drop of that coconut oil hair serum that I always use, and then maybe four to five drops of the Australian Floetrol. 
And that's it. I used my pouring medium. I'll show you the pouring medium. So that's one thing maybe you're not familiar with right now. That's the pouring medium that I used for this specifically, for this painting. I don't always use that one, but that's what I used for this one. Oh man, the color is coming out of this though. See what I mean how that white, even a small amount of it is trying to take over. And I don't want that. I want some nice darker colors as well as gradients of the light. So I might stop adding the white as much. All right. I'm liking the way this looks. It's got some really cool depth to it already. And that magenta is playing really great with that doxazine purple. It's creating kind of like that gorgeous little gradient that I was looking for. So I'm gonna try big layers and see what happens. So this is more doxazine purple. And then this is gonna be even more magenta. So instead of tinier layers, I'm doing larger layers and releasing it. And then I do want the center to darken up a little bit. So I'm gonna not add the white. Yeah, the star is definitely making a pattern Beautiful. Right. Look at this thing. It's creating such an interesting little, it's not centered. I'm noticing that now, y'all. That's okay. So we will make sure that we fix all of that before we do anything. This looks cool. I like this a lot. I even mixed up a little bit of extra white just because I know that sometimes I tend to make mistakes, y'all. And this was one of them. All right, so where do we wanna go now? All right, so let's continue with these big bubbly layers, right? Maybe I'll try to release it more in one direction than the other. Yeah, it's creating this really cool shape because of the shape of the cookie cutter. So in my previous one, I didn't think that the shape really mattered as much. But with the star, I'm definitely seeing <clears throat> the difference, you know what I mean? Trying to get it to pull just a little bit more before we do our little swipe. All right, I think we're ready. All right, well, there's that. Now I should be able to shift all of it closer to the middle. If I do it slow, it's gonna distort it a little bit, y'all, but that's okay. I think we're still gonna get a really cool effect out of it. I actually think I like the way it's shifting better than it was originally. 
All right, let me get my colors out of the way before we do our spin. So I'm not wasting all this paint, y'all. All right. Now I like it. Now let's introduce a little bit of heat to it. See if we can do anything else with it. Yeah, as you can see, the cells are very different. They're very, they're not as big and round as they were with just Floetrol and plain silicone. They have a different kind of organic-ish look to them. And I really like that, actually. All right, so I'm ready to spin. Are you guys ready? All right, I think it's going to be pretty cool. Here we go. Just doing small spins. I'm basically just looking for coverage, honestly. <clears throat> I want to make sure all the corners get get a little bit of love. I might just let it continue because it's doing what I want. Look at those lines, though. Goodness gracious. an issue that I need to fix. This corner over here has no paint on it, so there's no way for it to flow. Alright, so I can just dab on the corners here. Let's get a little bit of paint on them. It's just like resin. If they're dry, it won't move. All right, so now another gentle spin. And I think that's about right there. Oh, yeah. You can see that white starting to push through the base coat. It's kind of pushing through the thinner layers of paint on the outside edge. That looks really wicked, y'all. Let's see what we can do with this. Yeah, I'm getting this awesome, like, pearling effect on the outside edges. And then the inside has that really wicked lacing from the shape of the cookie cutter. I'm liking this a lot. Wow. I love this thing. Look at this thing. Man. Let me bring you guys down here. Check it out. This is awesome. So I'm getting these really wicked like purling of all that base coat pushing through to the surface. And I feel like those are going to continue to grow. But like look at the way the cells developed using Australian Floetrol without American Floetrol. I mean, I think this thing came out really awesome. I really love the look of the different compound. If you wanna watch another video just like this, click the screen right now and I'll see you there.